So Nick, how many hacks do we have? 17, 17 hacks. These are things that'll save you money, protect your boat, and keep you safe. And they're pretty easy to do. Yeah. Losing your dinghy is a major inconvenience, and it could also be very dangerous. We met some people down in the Exumas who lost their dinghy while they were at a friend's house. It got untied and they never saw it again. If you saw Nick's video a few months ago, there's a guy that jumped off his boat to go after his dinghy, and he almost died. And we're not immune. Honey, remember that time we woke up and our dinghy was gone? I had totally forgotten that, actually. <laughs> It was Morrow Bay, and it turned out the Coast Guard was a little worried that somebody maybe fell overboard. We found the dinghy, but it turns out it was because we didn't tie it to the boat well enough. Well, we've solved that problem. First of all, we use two dinghy painters, and each of those painters has its own locking carabiner. So we don't even have to worry about tying a knot. You really got to keep up with it because the salt air just wants to eat away at anything metal. Cleaning off the salt and the corrosion is really just step one. You still have to protect the metal after it's been cleaned. There's a lot of products out there that do a very fine job, but if you want something that's simple and easy, try WD-40. That's right, the old standby. There's a mixture of solvents and paraffins and oils in this stuff, but it does provide a layer of protection on top of stainless steel. Instead of spraying it directly onto the metal, I suggest that you spray it onto a rag and then wipe that rag all over the metal pieces. After you're done, there may be a little bit of uh, kind of a bluish haze to some of the spots, but at least it won't be rusting. I'm hungry. Honey, there's nothing in here. It's just because I wanted to show people what you can do with non-skid. This is stuff that you put under your rug or anything else on your countertops that you don't want moving around. So instead of having all these jars rolling around like this while you're at sea, which is really not a good sound, but also in really rough seas, I've had this thing open up and they drop and spill. So this is a really good hack to put this down and secure your jars of goodies. We love to watch movies in bed, but we are really, really lazy. Instead of having the laptop in between us on a pillow or something, we actually suspend our screen above the bed. So we just look up. It's really nice watching the movies on the iPad. It makes it easier for me just to fall asleep like this. Megan falls asleep even faster. <laughs> so I can go from the rom-com back to watching Top Gun. 12 volt fans on a boat are great and really the more the merrier, but they sometimes don't move enough air for you. So what's really handy is some sort of shop style 110 volt fan that runs off an inverter or shore power. They can really move a lot more air, especially if you put them near the door or a window to really cool things down inside the boat. And you can buy these a lot cheaper than the Hella Turbo fans for about 25 to $40. You can get one that moves quite a bit of air. We learned early on how important it is to have a knife at the ready. The jack line follows the anchor road up and wraps itself around the window, the windlass. So now the windlass is stopped and we're beamed to the biggest seas we've ever seen. Give me the knife! <laughs> when you need a knife, you usually need it really fast. So where one is good, more is better. We've got four knives at the ready on Clarity. One right behind the helm. The second one is by the back steps. We've got another one right here at the mast in case we need to cut any of these halyards. This is our rope locker in the port bow. This is where we keep a whole bunch of lines at the ready in case we need to replace something. And right next to the lines, I've got a rigging knife. If I need to make up some sort of line rather quickly, this will help me do it. Things can go from annoying to actually dangerous in a hurry. Let's say that you got something wrapped up on your propeller, which actually happened to us one time. Well, on this boat, we are ready to go. We've got the fins, we've got the masks, and the snorkels right here at the back of the boat, which, by the way, is right by the knife. 
We could be in the water and fixing it in about 30 seconds. And speaking of masks, there's nothing worse than having a fogged up mask if you're snorkeling or free diving or scuba diving. One easy hack is to wash the inside of the mask before every trip into the water with some diluted dish soap. You don't have to use very much, but if you clean it every time, that'll keep the fog from forming. And for whatever reason, let's say you have to stay down underwater a little bit longer, this spare air acts like a mini scuba tank and it'll give you about five minutes underwater. What do you got here, Nick? Oh, this is my collection of bungs. Is that like an instrument? <laughs> <laughs> if you were to have a leak on a boat, it's probably gonna come from just a handful of places. One of those places would be the through holes. The bungs are used to close off a through hole that is leaking for whatever reason. But that's not the only spot where water can ingress. You could have some ingress around a shaft coupling, a rudder stock, uh, or maybe some other sort of through hole fitting. Here's another emergency solution that I think should be aboard just about every boat. Uh, this is epoxy putty. It's like a Tootsie Roll where you've got the two different types of material uh, rolled up together. All you have to do is break this apart and squish it into a little ball and it's gonna set up into hardened epoxy in about five to seven minutes. It'll even cure underwater. This can solve a lot of problems really quickly. We have met so many boats who've been struck by lightning. So if lightning hits, it's gonna hit your mast and it's gonna take out all of your electronics and instruments, including your VHF antenna. And that could be your last best communication. On Clarity, we have a backup second VHF antenna behind the helm. Nothing makes you look sportier than having all your cool gear right over your head. This is our custom rack where we keep a boat hook, fishing pole, some paddleboard paddles, and some pole spears. This rack is made from a material called starboard. If you're not familiar with it, do a little Googling. It's good for a lot of different stuff. And it's pretty easy to work with too. We started with a pattern, cut that pattern out with a rotozip, and then it was just a couple stainless steel brackets and we had it mounted. It's been in service for two and a half years. Did you know there's an as seen on TV section in Target? Do people still watch TV? Anyway, we found this screen there and it was $25, came with Velcro. I reinforced it with Velcro and then also added this additional screen all the way down with more Velcro and it works really good for about one season. So we just replace it every year. This stuff is wonderful. This is Dyneema and you can use it for all sorts of things on a boat. It's really, really low stretch. It's super strong and UV resistant. So you can use it just about anywhere. And with a couple of FIDs, you can do all sorts of crazy things like splicing in eyes, shackles. You can make soft shackles out of it. It's really handy stuff. We won't go into details. There's plenty of videos out there. So do some Googling and learn how to work with Dyneema. Another great side benefit to Dyneema is that it tends not to squeak like other double braided lines do. So this is actually what's holding our trampoline on and it doesn't make any noise. I think you have a Fipertex problem. <laughs> no, I have a Fipertex solution. I mean, you can use this stuff for everything. For side curtains, for baskets, for under the helm seat covers for side shades, helms. I mean, I cannot get enough of this stuff. So Fifertex comes in two different weights. One is just kind of a see-through screen. And then the other is a double layer and you really can't see through it very well, but it, it's really nice for side curtains. And I get it from Sailrite, roughly 15 to $20, depending on what weight you want. So highly recommend Fifertex. Keeping cool is a big goal aboard Clarity. And one thing we found that has really helped keep the inside cool is this one-way vinyl adhesive from Vivid. 
ordered this right off of Amazon. I think it was 40 or $50 to have enough to do all of the hatches. You had to take off the hardware, cut it out custom, but this stuff was working great. It still lets in enough light downstairs that the inside of the boat doesn't feel like a cave. Live from the toilet. <laughs> now, if there's one thing that you can do as a guest aboard somebody's boat to make the captain really, really cranky, it's to leave the faucet on and let all of that fresh water go down the drain. We've solved that problem aboard Clarity to a great extent by installing some low flow faucet inserts into the faucet so the water just won't come out very fast. But if I hear that water pump running too much, you're gonna hear from me. <laughs> I don't know if you saw our video about the ultimate boat cushion. One cushion to replace them all. Introducing the ultimate boat cushion. But I just highly recommend this. It's hard on one side and soft on the other. So that means that in a situation like this where that's not very comfortable to sit against, you just pop this right here and all of a sudden you've got a couch. So comfortable. And the best part is you can make it yourself. Click on the link below in the description and I'll take you to my video where I show you step by step how to make one. We don't worry a whole lot about security on Clarity, but when we go to a dinghy dock where everybody else has got their boat locked up, we like to lock ours up too. This is rather handy. This is a 12 foot bike cable for a lock. We use separate locks because well, these go bad after a couple of years. They get all rusted up. This you can thread through the outboard engine handle and then through the boat and your gas tank and then to the dock. I recommend it at least 12 feet long. Well, that made us get organized. Yeah, we got the boat cleaned up for you to do that video. A lot of these hacks are things that we've actually come up with over the years from making mistakes like not tying the dinghy on to the boat well enough and the dinghy floats away. And some things have just come about through sheer laziness, like an iPad suspended <laughs> over your pillows. <laughs> that might be my favorite hack. The only thing we need now are straws so we can drink our drink without moving our heads. Or how about an intravenous line for your oh, coffee? That'll Would work. That work? <laughs> so put in the comments below what your favorite hack was or if you have any new ones that we could use. We're always looking to learn and always looking to improve. And on that note, we'd like to uh, wrap this one up and just give an extra huge shout out to all of our patrons. Thank you so much for all of your contributions. We really appreciate it. Thank you so much, everybody. Appreciate you watching and we'll see you next week.